This is a presentation of the National Science Olympiad Astronomy C event for 2016 that is being held at the University of Wisconsin Stout in Menominee, Wisconsin on May 20th and 21st. It is, has the same topic as last year's competition in astronomy, stellar evolution, star formation, and exoplanets. I am an educator, Donna Young, an educator for the NASA Astrophysics Division and one of the two co-national event supervisors for the astronomy event. And the NASA Astrophysics Division sponsors both the Reach for the Stars event and the astronomy event. This webinar will be posted on the Chandra X-ray uh, website under Education and then Science Olympiad. And it will also have a link to the National Science Olympiad website. The PowerPoint that accompanies this will be posted on the AABSO website. And I will talk about the location of those resources towards the end of the presentation. So the event description is exactly the same thing as last year. Uh, Students, teams have to be knowledgeable and understand the basic math and physics relating to uh, the stellar evolution and star formation and the exoplanets that are listed in the deep sky objects this year. And each team is permitted to bring either a laptop or a three ring binder, um, each team member. So each team can have either two laptops or two three ring binders or one laptop and one three ring binder. And yes, laptop means uh, tablet or iPad, what, whatever um, you are more most comfortable with is fine for this event. In any uh, way, um, internet access is not allowed. Not that it would help you anyway, because you really need the image sets that go along with the questions in order to answer these questions. And you only have 50 minutes anyway. So, but you can archive web pages, put together the information on your computing device in any way that you want to do that. Um, the content focus, the terminology is exactly the same as it was last year. The only difference are the deep sky objects, and one, except for one of those deep sky objects, uh, the very last one in the list, HR 8799, was on last year's competition. So if you take those deep sky objects and you were to rearrange them into groups, similar groups, we have two star formation regions. We have five pre-main sequence stars, of which three are protostars and two are brown dwarfs. We have five individual planets and five star and planet systems. So uh, molecular clouds uh, start the process of stellar formation, uh, star formation. That's where star formation regions begin. You have to have clouds of very cold uh, molecular hydrogen uh, for clumps of material to stay together long enough to, to have a protostar even form. They wouldn't last very long in a, in a hostile, hot uh, with region with a lot of radiation going on. So they start out in big, dark, black, cold clouds of molecular hydrogen. And then they end up condensing and collapsing and forming star formation regions. So you end up with uh, dark bands, dark absorption areas of uh, neutral hydrogen and ionized, once star formation really starts going, you have uh, ionized regions, H2 regions, uh, that are both emission in red and reflection in blue, showing that stars are forming. So the, here is, for instance, a typical star formation region uh, that started out in a cold molecular cloud. 
and you can see the emission, the reflection nebula in the middle where uh, ultraviolet radiation from massive stars that are forming there are emitting copious amounts of that UV radiation uh, and that's being reflected from the gas and dust surrounding it. And in the red regions, you can see where the radiation is actually heating the gas and dust so that it is emitting radiation in the uh, red part of the spectrum, hydrogen. And you can see that the, as, as the, that radiation uh, it undergoes photo evaporation and, and, and exerts pressure on the gas and dust around it, it carves out areas, clear areas, and then carves out those beautiful pillars of gas and dust. And in those pillars of gas and dust, it, an, an, another set of, of protostars are being formed. Uh, one set of, cloud of star formation triggers another set of star formation. So this is a typical representative of a star formation region. One of the deep sky objects this year is Bernard 68, and it is a cold molecular cloud. It is considered to be on the brink of collapse into a stellar nursery. It is only 500 light years away. It's very, very small. It's only estimated to be about three solar masses in Bernard 68, so it will not form very many stars before it runs out of uh, dust to do that. 